Let's give it up for Mr. Matt and Adostop, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, can we have another hand for Manoli, please? Doing a great job hosting the show. I also personally love him. Uh, it's not a level of intimacy I expected to cross on stage, but I'm happy about it. Uh, it's a big day for me, guys. Very exciting. I finally finished that jigsaw puzzle. It's been a long time coming. No, don't you listen. This was a hard. This was. It was a thousand-piece puzzle of a Jackson Pollock painting. I finished it. and I was like, "Wow, I put a lot more work into this than Jackson Pollock did." I uh, uh, I know uh, when I get on stage, it's a little alarming. I'm aware at this point in my life that I look like I'm 14 years old. Uh, most of the time when people see me at a show, they don't think I'm a comedian. They assume it's some sort of uh, make-a-wish situation. <laughs> uh, this was my, my dying dream to perform comedy at a bar in Kenilworth, New Jersey. Uh, it's the thing is I can't grow a beard. That's, that's what's going on. Uh, I'm actually, I'm 28. Uh, I still can't grow a beard. That's, you, you have no idea how humiliating that is. Uh, I can't, I'll, I'll give you guys a kind of face map for what I can, the closest I can get. I can, uh, I can kind of go like a, a thin, sort of wispy kind of, uh, like John Waters mustache on either side of my upper lip, but not in the middle. It's like a, it's like a reverse Hitler, if you can imagine what I'm talking about. And I can't grow any hair on my cheeks at all, but I can grow what's basically a, a, a single file line of thick, bristly hairs that runs along the underside of my chin, and then it goes down the right side of my neck, but not the left side, for some reason. It's an extremely asymmetrical beard. It's a terrible beard. I have friends, uh, like all the male comedians on this show, who have great beards, and they try to comfort me about it. They're like, uh, they're like, hey, you know, you can't grow a beard, but uh, at least you don't have to shave every day. And then I'm like, what are you, an idiot? It's more important that I shave every day. If other guys don't shave for a day, you know, they got like sexy stubble. If I don't shave for a day, it looks like I have menopause. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you right now? It's not a good look. It does not work for me. Now my, uh, now my mom's got it into my head that I'm losing my hair. She keeps telling me that. It's her favorite thing to say when she sees me smiling. Uh, she, uh, she keeps, says it over and over that I can't forget about it. And I mean, I'm not a vain guy. I'm willing to go bald if that's what is going to happen. I just can't go bald before I can grow a beard. Do you have any idea the pressure that would put on my eyebrows? I can't, I can't handle that level of pressure. I am actually a uh, half-Jew, which uh, means I'm not one of the chosen people, but I am an alternate. I don't know if you're aware of that. It's in the Torah or something. I don't know. Um, People are surprised sometimes uh, when I tell them, they're like, oh, you know, you don't look Jewish. Then I say, well, Jews can be deceiving. <laughs> it's mainly for me. Uh, I'm not, you know, my, my parents didn't uh, raise me really with any uh, religion in my life because they were from different backgrounds. I've never uh, had a lot of experience. I've never read the Bible or anything. I, not either of them. I haven't read the Old Testament or the sequel. Uh, I don't, I don't, Good sequel, holds up. Uh, I'm told, I'm told. I heard this uh, fact recently, you guys have probably heard this sometime, that the uh, Bible is the best-selling book of all time. Have you heard that? I don't believe that for a second. Uh, they may have printed the most copies, but best-selling? When's the last time you heard about somebody buying a Bible with their own money? That doesn't... You never have to buy a Bible. The world is full of people who will give you a free Bible if you feign enthusiasm. And also, it's the easiest book in the world to steal. It's, there are a million opportunities to steal a Bible anywhere you go. If I ever want to count how many motel rooms I've stayed at during my life, I just look on the bookshelf and count the Bibles I've taken from those gullible, gullible Gideons over many years. You can just walk into a church and walk out with a Bible. Who's going to stop you? A nun? They don't have bouncers at church. You could mug an immigrant on the subway if that's your style. They're always reading it on there. 
I know it sounds harsh, but think about it this way. You don't even have to feel bad if you steal a Bible. Because if someone gives you trouble about it, you're just like, well, I haven't read it yet. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I don't know. Is, does it say something about stealing in the Bible? I haven't had a chance to read Show me where it says, thou shalt not steal. All right, well, now for future reference, I know. I know that I... To be honest, I'm glad I stole it, because now I know, going forward, it says, I'm thou, right? When it says thou, it's talking about me in there, I don't know, I don't, I don't speak Bible, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thou shalt uh, covet thy neighbor's wife? Oh, I got this book right in time, that's a good, that's a good news. Okay. I don't understand, there's a lot I don't understand about the Bible. I don't understand the miracles, everyone talks about Jesus and these miracles. That's supposed to be the most accessible part, it's magic, but I don't, uh, I don't, I don't get it. They, uh, everyone talks, you know these, they talk about, you know, Jesus, he uh, uh, turned water into wine, and he uh, did the loaves and the fishes. They all seem to be based on saving money on groceries. I don't know why those are miracles. Very frugal messiah, apparently. King of the Jews, indeed. Eh? <laughs> Shouldn't have gotten the biggest laugh, but it's not uh, appropriate uh, proof of that. But nobody ever talks about Jesus' uh, greatest miracle, at least in my opinion, which was his first one he did when he was like a week old, and he made the years start going forwards from B.C. to 80. That's so much more useful than all the other ones put together. If it wasn't for him, this would be the year negative 2014. Did you ever think about how confusing that is? No, you didn't. You're not thinkers. <laughs> I didn't mean to get angry, I'm sorry. That was not, that was not where I wanted to go with that. Uh, this, is maybe a little, this is maybe a little weird left turn, but have you ever uh, seen somebody who's so old that they don't have a race? Do you know what I mean when I say that? Do you know what, I, you, you know what I'm talking about. There are certain people where it just, at some point, it just melted off. And now, like, whatever, they could have been black or white or anything, but now they're all E.T. I don't think you can... I don't think you can tell ahead of time who it's going to be, but it's always somebody. I saw somebody like that in my neighborhood the other day, and I was like, I'm honestly not sure if that is a Hispanic man, or an Asian woman, or a fire hydrant that got a weave stuck to it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to lie to you, race is a complicated issue, and I don't think I'm going to solve it in the next 30 seconds of my comedy routine. I would need 45 seconds for that, but I, uh, uh, I did, uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen, have you guys seen this movie, 12 Years a Slave? Yeah. A couple people, uh, everyone else wants to forget about history. Uh, <laughs> uh, a friend of mine was telling me about this movie, this is the last thing I want to mention, he said, uh, oh, you gotta see 12 Years a Slave, it's amazing. It was just this one really uncomfortable scene during the movie, and I was like, there's one uncomfortable scene? <laughs> In 12 Years a Slave, the movie of a man being enslaved. If there's only one scene that bothers you in that movie, you're probably not watching the movie the same way everybody else is. If there's only one scene that... It's probably the scene where he goes free, right? It's gotta be... It's gotta be the scene. All right, thanks a lot. I'm Matt Gossett. We're having a lot of fun. We're having all of our fun. Guys, give it up one more time for Matt Gossett.